What's up guys, welcome back to my YouTube of Chicago Pro Prep. Currently four weeks out, if you haven't been following along, please check out the last videos. We've been taking you all the way through my prep since I was 20 weeks out and, and giving the layout of my diet program, the changes I'm making, and reasons behind it. And hopefully you're learning along the way. So to update from last time, and I got some notes here, make sure I do touch on everything. Um, I was six weeks out and body weight was around 219. And so, trying to make 212, which um, I'm definitely gonna do. It's always a concern because my weight likes to stay around like 245 in the off season. But this morning I was 215.8. And uh, some, quite a bit has happened from, from over these past two weeks. Uh, right after that last video, I ended up going to Puerto Rico I had a, a client compete out there at the Puerto Rico Pro. And while I was on vacation, I'm like, well, I'm gonna push things a little bit harder. Um, I, I brought food down a little bit, and I, I added in a fat burner, and I was doing like 30 minutes of cardio in the morning. Uh, that was going well out there, and you know, I was in a new gym, I had some new equipment, and so I decided to, to do a few different exercises because I, I like to try some different stuff out. I end up on my hamstring day, instead of doing a uh, dumbbell split squat, I did it with the, this hammer strength machine. And it was a little bit different range of motion. And I went down and put a big stretch on my right back leg. I think I put too much force in it. I ended up slightly tearing my rec fem, which I feel like I'm plagued with this now because last prep, for New York, I tore my left rec fem pretty bad. And so, this right one, I felt it right away pop and just drop the weight and just walked away from the gym for the day. Um, I have to say, what, being six weeks out and have that happen is, is very discouraging. Mentally, it's quite a challenge and a barrier to overcome. And it's, it's the last thing you want to happen. Not proud. And uh, you know, I, for one, first off, if I would say if you are traveling and you're on prep, it's okay. I would try to find machines that closely mimic the patterns, the movement patterns that you're used to doing. Don't do something so different that takes you out of a, a, a range of motion or even out of mechanical positions that you aren't used to. Um, and also, you have to keep in mind, like if you're doing a different machine. Uh, say, say you were doing hack squats and you go to a gym that doesn't have a hack squat, all they have is a barbell squat and you haven't been barbell squatting. That barbell squat, those same sets are going to be far more fatiguing than say the same hard sets on a hack squat. So you kind of have to factor that in on prep because you don't want to travel, be fatigued from traveling, fluids off, possibly meal times off, you go into a, a new gym, try some new equipment out. And uh, it, it just makes you more susceptible for injury. So what, at least what I did when I travel, I try to shift my days around to where I have off days on the day that I'm actually flying to help a little bit with that. But anyway, that's as far as like my thoughts on, on traveling and, and training. Uh, now, as far as dealing with this injury while you're on prep, it's, it's very easy to get emotional about it and, and think like, this is gonna be completely over. How can I prep like this? Um, there's certain instances where you need to make a good call and pull away from prep, just depending on the injury. Like, will going through prep, will it be such a hindrance that you won't be able to prep optimally? You can make the injury worse, and then that'll set you back even further for the future. If that's the situation, then it's smart to just pull back and pull out of the show, or even pick a later show. Um, now, if this is something that that won't be that limiting and you can recover from, you can work through, work around, um, then you know maybe make the choice to, to, to go through with the show. So for me, it was just uh, let, let me just assess and see how I feel. So it did tighten up on me, but um, now, you know, at the five week mark, so this was a week ago, uh, pretty much had no pain in the legs, swelling was very minimal. Um, the good thing is, is that I've really sped up metabolism wise, so I, I'm, I barely had to do cardio. My body weight came down a lot. When I was out there, I ended up coming back. 
I was 214 pounds, so I lost like five pounds over that trip. So I, I pulled back in cardio, which was a, a, a blessing because I can now um, still drop and get tighter, but I'm not having to fatigue my legs and let my, my leg heal more. Um, so that worked out really well. Now four weeks in, my leg feels really good. Uh, I haven't done a direct quad workout. I could do hamstring workouts. Um, I'm thinking very, very soon I'll be able to, to do some quad training. Also with the rec fem itself, like if you're in hip flexion and just doing knee extension, like doing a leg extension machine, it, it doesn't have that much play in that. So uh, I think doing some like leg press and, and leg extension very soon I'll be able to do that, especially since I have that new fit machine, uh, which I, I can use very light loads to stimulate and also I'll probably do some blood flow restriction which is made for rehab so I can restrict my quads pat them up on the newbie on the new fit and use a very light load and get a very strong hypertrophy stimulus out of it uh, anyway so currently I, w I was 215.8 today uh, diet I'm at 230 grams of carbs 270 grams of protein and then 40 grams of fat so I still have a good amount of food what I'm doing with cardio now is I do 10 minutes in the morning, I do 5 minutes before I train just to get a warm up, but it counts as cardio, and I do another 10 minutes after my training, which basically spreading out like that has no fatigue in my legs, opposed to doing like, compared, compared to doing it like all first thing in the morning. Um, but sleep is great, I, you know, I'm sleeping 7 to 8 hours a night, I wake up once to go to the bathroom, digestion's fairly okay, uh, I, I usually just the GI transit is just a little slower because of, of, of prep. Um, but looking at my picks this morning, I'm very pleased with where I'm at for four weeks out. Um, I'm right on track and I think it'll definitely be my hardest look. Going into today's training session, today was my full day. And so I've done something a little different with training since I don't have this leg day. I, I just move my volume around. So normally I do legs, push, pull. So what I did is on my push and pull days, I pulled out my tricep work. On my leg days, I pulled out my calf work, and I put it on its own day. So now my workouts are shorter. I can put a lot of intensity into the sets I do, and uh, but I'm not in there as long, so I don't have like my my volume towards the end for the smaller muscle groups doesn't just get lack of effort or in, in fatigue is is when, when fatigue is getting higher. So now I'll do pull, uh, push. It'll be like arms, calves, abs, and then I'll do hamstrings. Um, then I don't, then I'll repeat that pattern, except I'll do my quad day, I'll take off day. And uh, for quads right now, all I've been doing is I have a stage four laser that I've been uh, treating it with, and also the newbie, I'll, twice, a, twice a day, I'll hook up to the newbie and just stimulate the fibers, find hot spots in my leg and try to lengthen it out. And, get some blood flow and recovery to it and that's working very very well um, so today was just pull day I started with my five minutes I do the art trainer which is phenomenal for cardio uh, it has the eccentric components very minimal uh, I have a lot of hip extension I takes a lot off the quads it's actually it is my favorite new piece at the gym for uh, cardio more so than the Stairmaster um, first exercise for the day this is I do have like an upper back focus on this day, so I start with a hammer strength low row. And positioning's really key on this one to really hit your, your traps and rhomboids well. You see I have the seat raised up very, very high. And where I grip the handles, I basically, I nearly just have two fingers at the very, very bottom of the handle. Because with the way that machine's set up, if you go too high on the handles, you end up having your, your wrist up, um, above the elbow and it, lends itself to a lot of bicep and you can't get that elbow back behind you and that's what you want if you want to hit traps in your rows you need to be able to drive your elbow behind your back and uh, if, you're, if your grip's too high you won't be able to do that so the the angle is very steep that I'm rowing at and it does an excellent job at, at hitting traps so um, I build up, I do four warm-up sets since it's my first exercise. Just working like 10 reps, then I drop to eight, then six, then like two reps, and then I get to my first work set. And it's all out, everything I got, uh, I'll hit 10 reps, and then I will back down in weight, 
and get as many reps as I can, which I think I had 13 reps on that, that second set. And uh, that'll be it for my hammer strength low row. So I had something that, that the first exercise, the thing that I really want to focus on was for upper back rhomboids. So I hit that. Now I'm, I move over to a good stretching movement, something to work in the lengthening phase and hit the teres major and, and the lats. Now I've been doing rack chins, but I, it, it was taken one day, the Smith machine. So I ended up doing uh, just a wide grip chin up and I loved it. I think doing rack chins has developed my connection with my lats and my teres major better for pull up and chin up type movements. So um, I'll, I'll do a weighted, weighted chin up. And uh, if you see my grip's pretty wide and I just pull up to about maybe the, the bridge of my nose, something like that. Keep my elbows kind of flared out. But man, the contraction I get is excellent. I do a slight, slight pause and control myself down. And that's the really key that I've noticed is like, as I'm controlling myself down, I'm trying to spread out my back and scapulas, and that really helps with uh, bringing the teres majors and lat into it to, to lower myself down. Um, same thing as the low row, I'll do like a set. I did seven reps with 25 pounds, and uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm still not good at them. <laughs> but it's an area for improvement, right? Uh, then I'll, I'll back, I'll just take the 25 pounds off and just, rep, just get as many reps as I can, which did 13 reps on my, my back offset. So now I hit two main movements, one for trap emphasis, one with lats and Terry's major. So now, um, you know, of course I need some more volume work in, so and I, I want to hit back. It works through so many different angles, so you want a, a, another type of row in a different movement uh, different, and, and move through a different uh, range of motion and angle. So I do a chest supported T-bar row. Um, I do like a lot of chest supported movements on my back days just so I can save my lower back for when I'm doing RDLs or squats. So with the chest supported T-bar row, uh, you can really get Terry's major lats and you're gonna have some, some lower mid trap work in it. So it's just a good overall back builder. Um, I work up here and my warm ups are, it's, it's more of just kind of feeder sets and uh, getting myself mentally and neurologically ready for a work set. So I'm doing like three reps, two reps, just to build up to my first weight. And then I'll hit, um, Again, like try to aim for like seven ten to ten reps, something within that, for my first working set. Then I'll back down again and hit hit something from ten to fifteen reps. Work work within that that rep range. And um, you know, I think with with your T-bar row, you got to make sure that you really aren't trying to pull your chest off the pad. It's going to happen. You know, uh, as you're rowing back, you should be slightly arching your back, but not excessively. And so that chest is going to pull up a little bit, but for the most part, you should have your weight really supported by the chest support. And uh, moving on from there, since that movement does hit some teres and lats, I move on to another movement to bring more trap emphasis. And I do a chest supported dumbbell row with my elbows flared out like 90 degrees from the body. So with my hammer strength row, that angle is different. You know, it's, it's, uh, you know, coming up at a really steep, um, almost a decline type of position. This one has, has more of a parallel movement. I can definitely feel more mid to upper trap fibers versus those mid lower fibers that I hit with the hammer strength low row. And uh, I, with gripping the dumbbells, put the plate on the dumbbell against your thumb and let so the weight kind of hangs back off. And it'll, it'll, I think it helps with uh, thinking about moving the elbows, pulling with the elbows and not with your hands, because you might end up using a lot of bicep otherwise. So uh, as far as the, the movement goes, just pull with your elbows. And the idea is to just completely retract your scapula, squeeze your scaps together and let them completely protract in the bottom. I'll do three straight sets there. So I'll hit, like I said, I think I hit 13 reps in my first set. I stay with the same weight and just get as many reps as I can in my second and third set. So the reps will drop because um, I am training close to failure. Uh, I think I hit like nine reps and the last set I think maybe seven reps. Um, so those were my main compound movements. And you can see we're going a uh, type of row to like a type of pull down. Make sure I cover all, all the, the whole back. So that was eight sets of compound moves. Now I move on to some isolation work. So 
I'll do a Nautilus pullover machine. Isolate the lats. And uh, I've liked this one and the positioning has to be right on it because it, it, you, you need the seat low enough to where your elbows are driving into the pad. Um, I can't grip the handles on it because it, it pulls my elbow off the pad and, and I end up using a lot of tricep it feels like. So I just keep my arms straight to make sure my elbows are driving on the pad. Um, I do have my back arched quite a bit. My, my scapulas are retracted and pulled down. I kind of keep my head back, but that's how I felt to get the most out of that machine. So I'll hit a set um, about around 12 to 15 reps and just drop weight, do a drop set, and then go to failure again. And that's done. That's, that's all I'll do for, for that. Uh, then my next movement will be a isolation for rear delts. And what I do is uh, a rest pause set. So um, I like doing them prone. Again, I'm, this is my whole thing, is like chest supported, trying to be as strict as possible, use the intended muscle group that, that I want to use for that exercise. I uh, will move an incline dumbbell bench between cables and uh, set the cables up to where I'm you know, perfectly doing a, a, pec deck, uh, a, a rear delt fly with the upper arm at 90 degrees to my torso and uh, try to keep my a little bit slight internal rotation to make sure I'm using my, my rear delt. And I'll, I'll work it up, just do a, a set of 12 to 15 reps. Failure, uh, I rest 20 to 30 seconds, go to failure again, What rest 20 to 30 seconds, and then go to failure again. And uh, that will be, that'll be it for my, my back day. Um, my, I usually have two bicep exercises, but that I moved over to my, my arm day. And, um, you know, other, I would, I would say that if you are a beginner to intermediate, you do not need to move arm training on its own because you should be able to get sufficient volume within one session. Um, I think as you get it really advanced, that's when you might look into breaking your volume up into more frequent sessions. So that's just something, something to consider. Uh, after I'm, I'm doing my training, I do 10 minutes of posing after every, every every training session and then I, after my 10 minutes of posing I hit another 10 my, my 10 minutes of cardio on the arc training and that's it for my my gym session and uh, because that pretty much wraps up my four weeks out um, one thing that I do want to mention moving forward so this past year I've been coaching myself and I did it for a few reasons for one I I enjoy the process, I like coaching myself, and I wanted to see what I could do on my own. I, I needed to do it for my own knowledge and, and know that I could do it. And I know that I can do it. I made some great improvements. At four weeks out, I'm ready and I know that I'm where I need to be. And I have clients that I take all the way, and, and so I'm confident in my abilities. I've gained a lot of self-awareness in, in doing so, and uh, I've, I've learned how to be a better coach in the process.